Welcome to the Shared Desk, episode 90. It's ancient. It needs a walker, but it's back. Are you kidding? We've t- we- we've upped our game. We're live on Twitch right now. Oh my gosh, we're twitching <laughs> right now. We are twitching right now. Hey, everybody. You are listening to the share. You are watching the and listening share- and listening to the shared desk live here on Twitch. And I am your host, T. Morris. Oh, hey, what's up? I'm a superhero. Yeah, I am a superhero. You think so? And uh, sitting across from me. Hi, I'm Pip Valentine. <laughs> you better. <laughs> That's all I can say. Yes, D. Quartermain, this is very cool. Uh, <gasps> now we can't I, make rude gestures to each other, exactly. though. Well, we can, but people can see them. Exactly, exactly. This, you know. Can you see this? No, no, I don't think they can see that. That's good. I am great. But they can see this. I am great. And they can see this. I am great. So yeah, they just, can see you just punching those buttons all the time. Hey, hey, what, what can I say? Hail to the king, baby. There we go. Uh-huh. Okay. Sure. So, hi, everybody. Uh, we are... um. It's double trouble indeed. Oh my God, uh, mm. Prince Prince Justin coming in with that the, is ancient. That 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 is truly from ancient. 08, from 10 years, ten ago. years ago. So I finally convinced my better half, swigging away on her, swigging away. On I her. gotta have this soda to prepare me for. Uh, um, I know you don't mind t- Pip. I, I know you don't mind Pip. I mean, you know, she's just. Yeah, she's all that. Yep. She's absolutely all that, and I totally get that. I believe that. After I've had a few of these sodas, I will believe I am all that. <laughs> so uh, I finally convinced her. I finally convinced her that we should do a live show. Cause I think it's more like we finally convinced each other to do another show because... Well, it wasn't just another show. I want to... I, uh, I mean, true. It's, if it's, you're going to come back, you might as well come back with a bang. Yeah, come back with a bang. As a matter of fact, I just realized the one thing I forgot to do before I hit... Before I before I hit uh, hit streaming uh. was record, so I'm just gonna have to pull the audio. Now, granted, the weird thing is that this will be the first like truly stereophonic Ooh, thing that we're gonna stereo, do because stereo, no, stereo. You're only coming in on the left. Oh, channel. mono I'm only coming in on the right. Channel. Mono, mono, mono. <laughs> the good news is the drop-ins are coming in full stereo. Oh, I was worried about that. Taco on grapple. So we got nothing to worry about there. We got nothing to worry. So this about. is our first show of any stripe since June. <laughs> Yep. Whoopsie. <laughs> Whoopsie. It's it's been, it's been a summer, everybody. Oh, That's yeah, why we're drinking. Yeah. It's been quite a summer, but um, not we, a bad summer except no, for well, like the rain. There's uh, been a lot of rain and, and thunder the, and the humidity and the humidities. And the humidity. But um, we're here, uh, Florence, Aunt Florence. I mean, Auntie Flo. I mean, Hurricane Flo. Hurricane Flo has not been Flo, uh, our way. Aunt Flo blew her way through the she, Carolinas. She missed us. Now blo- now she, well, now she's working her way through uh, through s- Southern Virginia. And uh, yes, I do have the soundboard on my side. I do have the soundboard on my side. Yeah. Um, but the, so, but yeah. So um, so we're supposed to be getting all the bad stuff uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow and Tuesday. Yeah, it's not going to be maybe some on Wednesday. So we'll see. It's going to be goes. wet. Um, be all right. The other thing I have on my side, by the way, I also have the bell. The bell, so, the magic so, bell. So the bell is also here. Um, of course, when you get your new uh, streaming machine. All this stuff all this will be stu- on my there's gonna, side. There's going to be a, an entire rearrangement. Of I guess the, you'll probably sit on this desk. side then. Um, yeah, I yeah. will probably sit over there while you. I'll sit I'll get the comfy here. chair. Uh, no, you're not going to get this chair. <laughs> <laughs> this is my command chair. This, yeah, no, no. Guess I'm, who sits there, ass and nope, mostly nope. me. <laughs> this is my throne. Hail to the king, baby. You always remember that. I have okay? been recording audio like hours every day in that chair. So I'm, I'm impressed. So you know, if any buttocks own that chair, it's <laughs> they're mine. Oh, hey, Rev Three, dude, saying GG for Florence. So do you know, I, I just want to point that, point out something here, uh, chat. I want to point out something to you too, Pip. I now have a bigger audience in the first seven minutes of this stream than I usually do when I stream Destiny. So I'm not surprised. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> it's me, a trap. right? It's a trap, is what it is. It's, hey. a, it's an absolute trap. Um, you just add a little kiwi, and things get better. I'm just oh, saying. Oh my god, I am surrounded by idiots. I love the I love the added effect of, of, of bringing in a camera now. I really, <laughs> it's going to add something to this. It's really going to add oh something. Oh my god! So let's pi- oh, even even Rev Three Dude says it's the pip factor. Of course um, it is. Y'all jokers must be crazy. Whatever the case, I uh, made this area so much are. better, and now I'm making the show so much better. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my. <laughs> Inappropriate. I I entirely think my arrogance is related to this soda I'm drinking. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, So, 
Uh, so, so want to get us back we, on track? <laughs> I'm gonna try. What, what, what have we been doing? Oh my on, gosh! Uh, on, on this, uh, this, well, this, you have been on a deadline. I have been on a deadline all summer long, and it's coming up to the end. Yeah. So, I want to get your opinion on something. All right. So, and Chad, if you want to chime in on this, I, I just want to get an opinion on everybody. So, right now, I'm doing what I think is one of the toughest things in a for dummies book. Okay. First off, I'm finishing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Leroy, you were just stupid as hell. You're starting to piss me <laughs> off, woman. This is a big no, mistake. No, maybe I shouldn't say This is a big mistake twitching this show, I think. Because right now, it everyone's wasn't just, mount it's up not, It's me. not just dummies, though. That's for all writers. Finishing yeah, is a problem. That's true. Um, but uh, Make of that what you will. There we go. Um, yeah, that's, already she's mugging to the camera. I'm in trouble. I'm like, I'm taking it from, <laughs> a cue from Deadpool here. <laughs> okay, so uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. All right, so I'm working on what I think is one of the toughest things in a, in a dummies book. And yes, uh, chat, I'm working on right now Twitch for Dummies. Woo-hoo! It should be coming out in uh, December of this year or January of next year, depending on how well the edits. Yes, she can take you. Yes, she can, D. Quartermain. She can take me like a pro. I'm <laughs> Y'all jokers must be crazy. But it's true. But it's um, true. But it's true. So. So uh, right now I'm doing the parts of tens, and that's why I have to do like a top ten list of something. Oh yeah, that sucks. It's all, it's all, yes, <laughs> that's it why is, I don't do nonfiction. Exactly, you avoid that sort of stuff. So I'm doing ten, uh, ten uh, uh, apps and hardware items uh, that'll make your Twitch stream better. And yeah. th- these are I, these are these are things that I have. Your mentioned. wife could be like I could be in one of them. Absolutely not. You know Seriously, what? It, Lana, call Kenny Loggins. You know what I'm talking about, Chad? Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> they do. do not need They're with me. Anyway, aren't anyway. you, Chad? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, it's turning on D. Dear sweet God Almighty, this was a mistake. <laughs> All right. So anyway, um, so so uh, so I wanted to get your opinion because uh, I got I actually got uh, Serena's opinion from upstairs. Mm-hmm. Um, uh. And no, no, no. Actually, she gave me. She, she gave, gave you an opinion. She gave me an opinion. Okay, now I want okay. your opinion, and I like to hear Chat's opinion. Uh-huh. So, so the big question I have here is, uh, and oh, the beer, by the way, is a um, uh, it's hypnotic a, beast. Hypnotic beast. It's a, it's a delightful shandy, and I'm really enjoying it. And Pip, you are having a what? Uh, this is also a lead. That's a Lidl from Lidl, you see. And this is from also Lidl. this is also a uh, wild legend lemon hard soda. It's not super yep. sweet. It's a bit like a little. Um, Regular lemonade, rather so, than being super sweet. Right. So the uh, and that thing is really super it sweet. It has alcohol in it because I have because I have the um, I have the sweet tooth of a five year old. Good luck, Guardian. So do I. Um, <laughs> so anyway, the um, so the, uh, the 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 thing is that I have to come up with ten either pieces of hardware or uh, ten apps, and I'm I'm really getting stymied. You need three more. Well, I needed three more, but then uh, I was noticing a couple of things. Mm. If I count each app that I mention. Then you have I, ten. I have ten. Okay. I have ten. But here's the here's the thing. I wanted to I wanted to mention ten different things that were that were unique. Like for example, I mentioned Photoshop and Illustrator in the same in the same blurb. They're both graphic design tools. Yeah, but they're then separate there was, programs. Yeah, but that but that was the thing. Then later later.com, which I also mentioned, uh, I mentioned later because that is a scheduling tool. And then I mentioned Trello, which is a uh, which is a um, uh, an organizational tool. Yeah. Then I mentioned Headspace and Calm, which are both meditation apps. Uh huh. Is that for when you're like like flipping out? Well, when you're when, when you're just trying to get <laughs> centered right before right before a uh, uh, right before that's you, why I use right before lemonade. You do, right before you do a because um, we can't mention alcohol in the book, I don't think. So that was my question. Really? That was my question. Do you think that I'm cheating if I count if I count two different apps? What's that are the both list in the called? Same, What's the list called? It's called top ten apps or pieces of hardware. Well, then you've got each app is one. All right. Then that chapter's done. Huzzah. So now I have problem a, solved. All right now, so I have that's and this is how this is how writers solve problems. So I'm working on Twitch for Dummies, and uh, that's what I've been working on all summer long. Um, I'm nearing the end. I'm, I'm one chapter away, and the chapter that I need to do is um, it's called uh, Streaming Without Constraint. Yeah. Which means that you you're not reliant on your console. You're not reliant. Just on want you to know that I'm holding back a really dirty comment. I bet you are. I bet you are. You sh- you're lucky, chat. I'm, <laughs> I'm restraining myself. <laughs> and you, my darling, you, my my my, my blushing, my blushing, I'm not blushing bro. anything. <laughs> God, <laughs> put you in front of a camera and suddenly you're a crass bitch. Holy, I that's how Dad did it. You said that's something. how America does it, and apparently New Zealand. And it's worked out pretty <laughs> well. Oh, you, so you've far. been to New Zealand, right? Yes, I, have, I have been. 
Okay. So what have you been working on, my darling? Uh, oh, right now, Nick says this is the best. Th- he's, he's more or less said, this is the best thing on Twitch, period. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Nick. I've only been on it like Thanks, 10 Nick. minutes, but already I'm burying him the oh, best no. thing. It's been 13 minutes. Feels like an hour to me, but holy crap. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, Cyberwolf t- t- has just said what you've been working on all summer. Mermaids! <laughs> And Benedict just went, what? what? Going back to sleep. Um, well, I got there. As I said, I can't remember what I said in June. Who who remembers anything they remember said in June? June. Um, but I did say that I was trying to get the rights back for the books of the order. <laughs> and I got the book rights back. Yeah. So, uh, Which means you have been recording your sweet Yeah. As Nobella off. said, I'm screaming through my back catalog. <laughs> Yo, Granny. Sounds like this. Ah, granny? Let's go. Let's go. I'm not a Granny. No, you're not. Um, a granny. But if I was, I'd be a badass Granny. You would be a badass Granny. Um, so You've I've, written about badass Yeah. Granny. So if you're a Patreon, um, you can subscribe and you get audio chapters every and weekday. Darling, where would a Patreon find you? Uh, a Patreon want to be. Want to be. Where would they find you on well, the internet? Well, that would be patreon.com slash. P- slash PJ Ballantyne. You want to try that again without slurring it? Slash. <laughs> From the top. That would be patreon.com slash PJ Ballantyne. There we go. And for $5, you get um, pretty much an audio book a month. Well, there you have it. So I've been doing that. I have um, scheduled a book a month to come out. Nick Kelly said, how many books are you going to put out? Are you going to put out three books? And I said, yeah, I'm putting out more than three books. Actually, actually, Rev3 Dude said, Pip is greater than the internet. <laughs> and Cyberwolf, his better half, said, this must be every shared desk from now on. <laughs> Maybe. So, yeah, I'm actually, wow. I'm actually putting out like seven books. Um, anyway, so I've been... How are you putting out... Oh, well, I'm re-releasing. I'm re-releasing. Re- yeah. No, I'm re-releasing all the books in oh, ebook yes, and... Um, yes, we are. Um, we, what's this we stuff? I'm recording okay. them all, ebook layouting them. My bad. Print laying out. I'm doing this all myself, chat. I know. It's terrible. Anyway, so guys came out last night, spect. <laughs> Don't flash white power signs at people. I'm not that- flashing. You gotta be careful. Wow. You gotta be careful, man. Wow. Anybody who flashes. Holy. No, yeah. have you seen it? Inappropriate. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, but the other thing too is that. They'll take screenshots of you. Yeah, Don't that, do that. Yeah, yeah, Don't do the, that. But the other thing is, no, I can also say, no, I wasn't making that simple. I was making the internet, the American Sign Language symbol for a hole. Oh, okay. Which is, a, which is, a, which which is, is what the same strangely thing is. Strangely, is the same thing. Yeah, yeah. That, this is not that kind of podcast, though, chat. This is not that kind so, of podcast. Back to what I was saying. The wonders of going live. Yes, dear. So, uh, so Geist came out last month. Spectre's coming out this month. Then uh, Wraith in October, Harbinger in November. And then next year, probably around February, March, Book five of the books of the order, Ooh. which I'm working on, called and it's called Edelon, okay, which is actually me. It's a Greek word for um, your spirit. So that's the books of the order. So the books of the order are going to be making a comeback. Yes, they've all okay. got new covers. Um, oh, gorgeous new covers! N- nice new covers. They're all going to be um, released in six by nine size with pretty new covers. Um, a little bit of editing. Actually, this is the weird thing. So I'm recording yeah. uh, Geist, <clears throat> and I'm finding um, errors. So, well, yeah, maybe that's why they didn't want you to do the audio. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Th- I'm but finding here's, here's stuff. here's my so question. Mm. Is there going to be any extra content? Or is it just going to be new covers with a, with a, pol- with a new Well, a actually, polish Geist edit? has um, included in it the short story in the beginning, oh, which sweet. I wrote. Yeah. Which is about what happened the actual day right. that the geists right. arrived. Right, right. Um, so I'm going back, and, and Edelon is set five years after the end of Harbinger. So I'm asking myself the question so, what have you guys been up to? Well, I've not been looking. <laughs> and there's been some interesting uh, developments. I'm just going to tell you right now Sorsha has a child. Yes. So there you go. Uh, that's, that's, that's interesting. So I've been doing that. Um, we've also been put uh, over the summer, we did a book bundle. Yeah. Um, yeah. We put together a thing called the Books and Brawn Dossier, which contro- which contains all of the stories that T and I have written, um, both about Eliza and just ministry stories. If, if our if our names were on the byline, they're um, in this book. They're, they're going to be in this, book. and that includes stuff from the Ministry Protocol, uh, Tales from the Ark, various yep. various 
everything basically. There's also uh, there's also going to be um, a print version of that coming out, mm-hmm. and in the print version, we're going to have an exclusive. Uh, story that does not appear just in the, in, for in the, the print people. Just for the print, just and the print's going to be pretty because I'm going to lay it out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, She's I've, taking on the mantle chat. Um, oh, last um, week I laid out three books. I laid out. Um, She's oh, even good at it. Um, at I actually it. laid out another anthology series. So um, I'm doing with a bunch of really cool female writers, and those writers would be <sighs> Stacia D. Kelly, um, Katie Robert. Uh, Lauren Harris, Piper J. Drake, and Usa Bradley. And uh, uh, we've been doing a paranormal series about mermaids, which I talked about, I think I talked about back in June. Um, And so now I am putting together the first three books in a print edition, and they're also going to be available as a collection. Um, And that's going to come out on October 9th, we've decided. We're going to have the... uh are we going to have the, the, the print versions ready for uh, Marilyn Renfrew? Well, yeah, we could take them to the oh, Renfrew. Oh, sweet ass. Okay. So, uh, so I, I did sweet. that. Um, oh, base, oh, also uh, Kindred and Wings and oh, Hunter yeah. and Fox have new covers. And I, for some reason, did not put Kindred and Wings out on print. So that's going to be available. I, I laid out that. Um, I laid out Spectre. Uh, this week I'm going to be laying out uh, the Books and Braun dossier, getting ready for that to go out and print. Uh, I'm putting together Weather Child, giving that a little a little dusty up. Right. Uh, right digital right. Magic, because I recorded the audio of that, there was a lot of corrections in it that I needed to go and do. So I'm going to re um, redo that and make sure it looks pretty for print again. So it's just, you know, dusting off things, making things prettier, yeah, applying yeah. the things that I've been learning through my marketing course That's and great. Great. and reading and all of that sort of stuff. Fantastic. So, yeah, it's been a uh, it's been a busy summer. Um, I I myself I am uh, I'm finding out that the um, dope, how's dope? Uh, yeah, that's that's what I was getting to. You wanted to know, right, yeah, guys? Dope, dope is on hold. And for those of you who are just joining us, thank you for joining us for the very first uh, ever shared desk podcast uh, recorded live. And um, when we send this audio out to the RSS feed over at thesharedesk.com. Um, it's still going to be preserved, you know, that whole live feeling, which has been... Um, this is going to be unedited. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it's nice and raw. Dear. Nice and raw. You'll be able to cut yourself on so, this. So, <laughs> be diplomatic. You're the, one that, you're the one that was worried about what I was going to say, and you're talking about me throwing gang signs. Jeez. Anyway. Um, Just watch those AK symbols. Thank you. I'm trying. I'm trying. Anyway, so going back to what I've been working on. I'm I'm still adjusting to the new schedule at the new job. Uh-huh. Um, the new job has been working out great uh, mm-hmm. for anyone who is interested. Um, chief, even though, even though you hail to the chief, uh, long live the chief, um, or as or as I like to as I like to say when I walk into the office, hail to the king, baby. Granted, I'm the only one in the office when I say that, so that's beside the point. You can um, say whatever you like then. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so I'm the chief of communications for a uh, um, a terrific initiative called Code.gov. Didn't you just drop a really nice 30-second video? I did. I dropped a 30-second hype video, and they're already talking about doing another one. Um, <laughs> I, not sure if I really if I really want to make another but you, one. But you got to use some some sweet toys, too. I, yes. And one of them actually is made that that uh, that top 10 list that I was talking about. Oh, the, this uh, is the, uh, what is it called? It's called the uh, Osmo Mobile 2. And, and it's basically a steady cam for your iPhone. Yeah, they call it a, a Gimli. As in, as oh, in the on- dwarf. As, as in the dwarf. Gimli. Don't toss a dwarf. No, no. I'm not going <laughs> to toss this. This is too expensive. But basically what it is, is it's, it's... It's a gimbal, isn't it? It's gimbal. Gimbal, not gimli. I, I was thinking gimli. Uh, a gimbal. Thank that's you. A, that's a very interesting image very you just put in my gimli head. Gimli and gimbal. Anyway, <laughs> it is a... It, I should have just stuck with Steadicam. It is a Steadicam for your for your smartphone. You, yeah. you put the smartphone in and it keeps it nice and level and, and you can do all cool. kinds of really cool stuff with it. And uh, and I, I basically went around Washington DC both at uh, both during the day and at night and I um I, I did uh, I did time lapse photography. Mm. And it was really some fun. house of cards shit right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I had some fun <laughs> doing it. I had a lot of fun doing it. Um but I'm still adjusting to that schedule, and I'm adjusting to. The I think commute. once you once you once you get Twitch uh, for dummies off your once plate, once you get Twitch for dummies off the plate, then I return to dope. Now, if you're curious as to what dope is, let me let me bring in let me bring up to speed those people who don't know the shared desk and don't know what I've been working on. So I am working on a on a, on a new novel. Um, 
it is. I, I have decided what genre it is. It is flexible enough that it could be either romantic mystery. suspense, or it could be thriller. thriller. I don't know if it'll be mystery. It could be a mystery thriller. Yeah, but leaning more I think, towards. I think it's more towards end. a. Thr- I feel like it's more like a thriller now. Well, I have to wait and see. You can what... have romantic elements in a oh, thriller. Yeah. yeah, I know. Um, and and I'm I'm playing like I said I'm playing around with it trying to figure out mm-hmm. what uh, what genre it fits in. But basically, uh, I have set dope. Uh, it's called dope because what I what I was uh, what what I was doing was um, it was actually at uh, at the Smoky Writers uh, retreat. Uh, we were all doing. Um, we we were I can't even remember how how the idea came across. No, I take that back. It was before the Smoky Writers. Did it involve moonshine? No, but it involved you. I'm sure, it didn't. Involve it involved moonshine. you. At, so 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 for anyone who is new to this uh, to this chat channel and who is new to the shared desk, this is my lovely wife Pip. She has a superpower. It, her superpower is the ability only one to find. This is your most powerful one. <laughs> you find the weirdest and the most intriguing. Documentaries, mm-hmm. you seem to attract them like like a moth, I look for like them. Flame to the moth. I mean, it's crazy the kind of the 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 the, the stuff you have dug up. Mm-hmm. The, I mean, from from Siamese twins, uh, or sorry, conjoined twins. Thank you. Uh, from conjoined twins to like the last days of Judy Garland <laughs> to to this. Yeah, you you found this uh, this this documentary called uh, "Stop at Nothing: The Lance Armstrong Story." Mm. And what happened was, is that I was watching this with Pip, and I thought to myself, "Yeah, what if I, set I remember this, now. What if I set this in the video game, in the professional video games industry?" So I started researching. Uh, I started researching esports, mm-hmm. and it is stunning. It it's is just growing and growing. Stunning. Oh, uh, it. So, so if you if you look in the background chat, you'll see in our uh, you'll see a photograph of uh, Pip and myself. Uh, it was taken at this uh, beautiful Hilton um, uh, suite that we were sharing with uh, with the Drakes, and um, you can't see it. Well, you can see it from from that from that altitude, but but one of the things that that uh, that you can see from from where we were staying there in Vegas was the Luxor. The Luxor has now become the official home of the esports arena. Yeah, and this thing I'm featuring in Twitch for Dummies. When did that open? It opened this March. Wow. And it is cutting edge technology. It is crazy pants how much money is in the esports industry. And people are saying, well, that's not really a pro sport. If you know what? If you it's if pro you, money. I was gonna say it's pro money. The money's still good. And people are and people are dropping big time buco bucks on this. So I so I started writing this romance uh, th- this romance thriller, if you will, set in the esports industry. And uh, and I'm calling it dope. Now we, we've we've sort of vaguely talked about um, getting a editor for it because this yeah. is you breaking into a whole new genre. Yeah. yeah. Um. So that that's going to be interesting because we're going to we know a lot of people in the fantasy, science fiction, speculative fiction right. area. Right. So finding a editor that's in the thriller industry is going to be we're going to I, I, we do know a few people we do know a few I think Jenny Meltzer might this might be in her wheelhouse this it could be. be and if and if it's not she'll know who we yeah who we or, or alter Kate or alter Kate yeah <laughs> that's true alter, the Kate alter of many Kate names well. that yeah. we know um, so yeah so that's that's what you're going to be but also I'm looking at the board behind behind <laughs> T's head right now which so, you, yeah uh, so I'm just going to run down some of the deadlines that we've got on there so uh, you can't Ed, see that because this the, the part of the, the it's up the above T's head yeah right here uh, Edelon which is the fifth book of the order I wanted to get done by the end of October right that could still happen. Um, the Secret of the Monkey God, which is Verity Fitzroy and the Ministry 7, book three. Um, I wanted to get that done by the end of the year. Again, that's doable because you're going to write it with me. Yeah. And uh, it's also only 60,000 words, so it's right. not too big. Um, I'm going to skip over that one. Uh, then we've got <laughs> Immortal Sisters. I wanted that done by 30th of March. That's I was going to do that this so year. Nice. That was going to be the third book, Nick. Um, but... <laughs> Uh, I pushed it off because I have um, the books of the order to deal with. Uh, then you've got dope, and you said the 31st of December yeah, for dope. Yeah, I'm going to finish it by the end of this year. And then there's the middle one, of which we have put no date on. I'm suspecting it'll probably be at the beginning of next year. Um, Death and the Falcon. You are really pushing that. I, uh, really I can see the cover, that. man. Okay, so uh, for anyone who is curious about Death and the Falcon, this is going to be possibly, possibly... The second spinoff of the um, no, the of ministry, ministry of Pe- peculiar occurrences. Uh, you meet a uh, a rather uh, rakish 
uh, professor, mm-hmm. uh, Professor Henrietta Falcon, mm-hmm. and uh, you meet her in Operation Endgame. It's Which is kind of sad because it's the last book of the Eliza and Wellington arc. <laughs> you are not new here, Munch. Uh, but Munch is here. Hey, Munch. <laughs> By the way, driving electric vehicles is hot. There you go. Um, <laughs> so we're gonna Death of the Falcon. Um, is I, I can see the cover. I can I know see you the can, cover, darling. But we have to. All right, first off, we have to sell a book to New York. We have to sell a book to New York, and that is what. So dope. That yeah, do- dope that's is, right. Dope is, comes first. We're not. We're not self pubbing dope. I'm. S- I mean, I know. I know it sounds like we're we're pitching it hard, but we are not. We are not self pubbing. So dope, we. I period. think the first step, obviously, with dope, is to find an editor and then uh, go agent hunting. Yep. For a thriller. That's, that's for a thriller uh, um, agent. Yeah. But the then Death and the Falcon is coming. So we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna. The last time she was like this chat, I will say that it was this podcast. It was this podcast. <laughs> and um, I yeah. caused this to happen. No, and the time before that was the Ministry of Peculiar Occurrences. And look how that turned out. Yeah, that was different, though. We sold that to New York. Yeah. That's different. But I was pushing it. Yeah, whatever. All right. So um, so that pretty much brings you up to speed on, what, on what's going on. Hey, Munch, good to, good, to, good to have you join us. Uh, thank you for staying up late. I know you, st- you didn't stay up late for me. You stayed up late to get a, get, get, get a look at Pip. I know that. I know that. <laughs> full on. I know that. Full on. Um, I, will say that, I will say this much. She is taking to, to Twitch like, like, uh, like a duck to water. It's terrifying. <laughs> terrifying. So uh, there it is. Um, well, it's your own fault. Yeah, I know. All right. So, uh, so, let's, so that's a kind of a roundup of where we've been, what we're been. What we're doing, but um, we were going to talk. Um, we are just going to talk writers' tech. We're going to do a little bit wanted, of writers' tech. Well, some of the stuff I like wanted that. to talk about some of the developments. Uh, this is going to excite Munch no end. Talking about writing, <laughs> um, I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the things that have been happening in uh, indie publishing right now. Yeah, and one of yeah. the big ones is uh, Create Space, who is has all well was bought by Amazon. Right, um, has been the way that we have produced. Pretty much all of our books um, yeah, well, in print edition. Yeah, uh, in particular, in particular, all when you say all of our books, we're talking all of the indie produced stuff. Yeah, we 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 actually started to seriously produce indie stuff after um, we, we we so 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 just to give you a, a, a brief background, we had a gap between publishers with, mm. between book two and book three. That's kind of when we got on the indie bandwagon. And that's when we got on the bandwagon with uh, Ministry Protocol. Which was a, a an anthology of uh, original short stories, all set in the Ministry universe, and uh, and and that was what got us into uh, producing stuff independently. We've done we've done everything from charity anthologies to um, the the anthologies that 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 you you found with the Ministry. There's the magical, uh, mechanications. There's magical mechanications, and then we uh, we kickstarted and funded uh, books five and six yep. of the ministry, and, and they were all run through Create Space, right? So that brings us to Create Space now, Pip. Well, um, of course, because uh, Zon, the Zon as we call him, um, <laughs> has Zon decided Zon. that uh, it's time to. I don't call it the Zon. That's because he's not in tune with like the hip. Indie producers like I am, but um, so they've finally decided that it's time to wheel in uh, Create Space and bring it within the fold of uh, KDP, which is Kindle Direct Publishing. Right. Uh, and people have been freaking out about the fact that they have to hit some buttons and things happen. And I admit I was one of them. <laughs> I was a bit worried about how this whole transferring things over into the KDP marketplace was going to go. But it actually, I did it over the weekend, and it was great. Uh, and then, so the new books that I laid out, the three new books I laid out this week, I all I did through um, K, uh, KDP rather than Create Space, and it was easier. It was actually better than Create Space. So, uh, if any independent publishers are out there, don't worry, it's going to be okay. Uh, a few <laughs> a few button pushes and crossed fingers, and you'll be fine. And I think. Going forward, it's going to be just much easier. Plus, now you can just look at one panel and see all your ebooks and all your print books ready to go. So that was that was that. Um, as far as new tech, uh, Stacia D. Kelly, who is writing the She's Seeking in chat right now, watching us. Hey, Stacia. Um, <laughs> see you at the coffee shop tomorrow. Um, she uh, she introduced me to a couple of cool new programs that I've been getting into, and I think. Uh, you and I are going to actually make the leap into paying for them. Paying for stuff? What? Yeah. Um, uh, one of them is Later.com, uh, which has a free 
a subscription, you know, a free account right? Uh, where you can do, I think it's 30 posts a month. And this lets you schedule Instagram posts. Which is which is which really is, big because at one time you couldn't do that. No. At one time it would it, it was you, you had to do it in real time. You had to follow these. You had to remember steps. every day. You had to remember every day. And oh my it was it was a it's a it's a pain. But it's a whole the whole idea, well it's it's happening in the moment. It's an Instagram. But later really? but later <laughs> actually uh, makes that makes that click in. Yeah. And it also does uh, Pinterest and uh, Twitter. Yeah. So you can and Facebook. Yes, and Facebook. And Facebook. You and can Facebook. Uh, schedule things for the best times when um, when you're gonna get the best engagement. That happens though when you pay for it. And, well, no, you can. You, 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 no, you have to pay the night. I just re- did the research on this one. You have to pay the nineteen dollar. Oh yes, if you want them to if, post it at the best time. Yeah, but you can also do research and look at what the time there best is time is, is and just post your stuff. I think you know, like yeah. Instagram is the in, in the evening. They prefer like between yeah. like midday and seven or something. Something like that. So it's a really good tool for that. Um, Stacia also got me onto, and I'm. Probably really late to this because I know a lot of ebook, uh, indie ebook producers have been using it. Canva. Uh, dot com. Um, I'm not using it to make book covers. I don't think that there's the the nuance that you can use to make good so ebook covers. Yes, uh, but for making social media banners oh, and yeah. Instagram posts yeah. and and they've got a lot of templates that are really cool for that. I was getting my I was getting my 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 uh, my, my slick spiffy names mixed up. I thought you were I thought Canva for a second was like vellum. Um, cuz one of the things we were vellum talk is about, different. Vellum is different. And we we're, we're going to talk a little bit about that too was that um so that that has been the the, the tech du jour for for writers and, and for and, ebooks and especially for e-books yeah is vellum. But here's the thing to know about vellum and why it's fine for ebooks. Mm-hmm. But when you start getting into the print aspect of vellum, it starts to fall apart a little bit. Yeah, I mean vellum is a template based system for putting together ebooks, and it's really great because it's you you put in. Um, you can do. You can put in pictures. Right. You can, but it's template based. You're picking off about ten there's, or twenty different there's templates. The there's the rule. Um, but it's great um, for eBooks. Um, it's not InDesign. No. <laughs> in fact, in fact, there. The, you know, the only thing that's InDesign is InDesign, InDesign. <laughs> um, and mean, it's not cheap. A lot of people. A lot of people tend to turn their nose up at, at how much you have to pay. Adobe for the, the the monthly fee to get mm-hmm. to uh, InDesign, but the thing is, what you're paying for with InDesign is not just the stability of InDesign, but also the ability of of, of full creative control. It is full. Co- I mean, Vellum you can put in pictures and things, yeah, but sure. y- you know, it's got to be in a certain way. It's, it's got to be, be in a cer- certain cer- way. Certain it's format, right. it's got to be a certain format. And um, uh, our, our friend of a friend of ours was having some real trouble with yeah. getting the the print version. Uh, right, right, and if you want that precision and you want it to look exactly how you imagine it to look, then you need InDesign. The also, good, the good news is though, for potential writers out there who are looking to self-publish their stuff, we, for a nominal fee, yes. will do the layout for you. We have done that for a few people, yes. and um, nice the, little side hustle. Nice little side hustle. <laughs> um, but also, uh, uh, Adobe. Um, going back to the audio books, um, I was having some trouble getting. The uh, the the sound quality yeah. just right for for or, for, for, audible. Uh, for, audible for audible because they have a very specific um, settings that they want a certain loudness a certain right. noise floor all right. of that sort of stuff and last Smokey my entire book bounced back to me from <laughs> from yeah, Audible which like put I, me I, into I was I was I was uh, within within the blast zone for that. So wow. you do what anybody reasonable point. person does. You go to YouTube and look for a little person who can explain it to you. Uh, and I found uh, a guy with the most annoying voice in the history of the world, but he knew what he was talking about as far as aud- Adobe Audition yep. goes. Yep. And so now what I'm doing is I record on GarageBand Garage band. No, no, you said garage the band. Time. Garage band. Oh, garage band. Um, I record. Much would appreciate I that. record and edit on Garage Band, and then I <laughs> export it and I put it into Adobe Audition. Run a few different filters over it. Three different filters. Export it as just the right kind of mono file that they right, need. Right. And I've never ha- since I did that. 
everything's great. Yep. So again, another Adobe product that was worth the, you know, it's very useful to us. Absolutely. So, um, any other writer tech though that uh, that that you want? Well, now you were also talking about uh, the, the 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 jump from KDP with Create Space and everything like that, and you were worried about it. It, uh, it wasn't that big of a deal, though. It right? was not a big a deal. The the thing about uh, KD uh, Kindle Direct pu- Publishing and Create Space, they were they've both been a- they're both Amazon outlets, right? And they have been for quite a while. Um, and the thing is that uh, Create Space, the books, are, the print books themselves are actually coming out at the same place right. that they were coming out from Create Space. So you're not really going to lose any. Um, so you hopefully, so you what, not you, lose any uh, quality. You, so you haven't seen any. Of the I have yet. ordered three proofs. I have not put them out yet. I will report right. back on what they are. There we go. There we go. You, you'll 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 catch that on the next show, which I promise. I promise, chat will not will not be, be three months. Will not be three from months. Now. It's just been a crazy, crazy summer. Um, I think I've inhaled a lot of cat fur. What? Just like today. Just, My nose is ticklish. It's, it's, oh, it's, 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 cat, it's on, it's it's on cat the drink. It's cat everywhere me. around here. Well, you, you just get used to that. Okay, yeah. so um, moving on to uh, to more pressing matters. Yeah, it's that time when you're asking... Oh, what's in the box? Inside the ark are treasures beyond your wildest aspirations. Time for a loot crate looky-loo on the shared desk. What's in the fucking box? You want to see it open as well as I. So I, uh, so I, have to, I have to do a, a quick confession here. I I had a bit of a meltdown with Loot Crate um, because <laughs> we we wanted to cancel our daughter's right. gaming crate, right? Because she, she was just not into it. She just wasn't. She just it. wasn't that into it. She's she's all Minecraft. She's all Minecraft twenty four seven. So they didn't have just and, a Minecraft box, right? If they had a Minecraft, if they had a loot Minecraft or a loot craft or a loot mine or or mine crate, then you know, I mean, hey, you know, uh, there you are, a loot. But, Great. But anyway, so um, so when we got charged for it, and then the customer service basically said, well, too tough, bad, t- tough, you're still going to get it, I raged, and then they wrote back to me. Now, here was the problem. I glanced at the email. Huh. And there's, there's, a, there's a problem with glancing at emails. You've you got to get better at that. Yeah, i got to get way better at that, because... All I saw was that they were giving us uh, a really sweet discount. Yeah, oh yes, exactly, Munch. I was super triggered. Um, I, I am. Um, you're like, oh, I, I see. You're gonna give me yeah, like twenty percent discount if I come back. Well, f you and a horse you rode in on. What I didn't read was is that they were going to cancel and the, refund and refund the subscriptions, and then if I wanted to come back after that, then they would give me twenty five percent off. So. I felt like a right tool. Um, Sorry, Luke. Great. Yeah. So we're so we're just. I'm just owning up. I'm owning up to it. Um, yeah. I, I shouldn't have raged like that. And when the next uh, when the next paycheck comes in, I will probably go on ahead and resubscribe to Loot Crate. And, uh, and we resubscribe at the beginning of the year. I think. Do what? I don't think this resubscribes until the beginning of the year. Yeah, something like that. But 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 we we'll, we'll keep keeping on. We're yeah, we'll keep keeping on. Anyway, just so, no gaming um, crate for the job. Just no gaming crate for the job. We're just going to do a vanilla loot crate for us. So so what is in this month's loot crate, or is that last month's loot crate? I don't know. We're going to find out. I think it's <laughs> this month. I think it's August loot crate. To be honest with you, is it okay? It Not my fandom. Uh, it's going to be though because I'm starting to get into this because of uh, because of Nick and Nick and uh, who out there likes Rick and Morty? <laughs> is that a cat? Hold on, I could be into this. Oh, it's not a giant cat. What is it? It's a giant Morty monster mayhem. <laughs> that looks a little like the thing in Destiny, actually. It does. It does look a little bit like like the boss from uh, from from the Last Wish, and uh, oh, that's. Yeah, I don't. I haven't. I haven't seen this one yet, Nick. So you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to get me. Uh, get get me caught up to speed on this. But yeah, it's the Morty Monster Mayhem uh, from Rick and Morty, and uh, I'm not sure what the theme is. We'll figure out what the theme is a little later. So, oh, this is so a little. One. Okay, this is interesting. I don't know if we're gonna use this. Um, things that we don't use, we end up putting in the. Um in the don in the gift box, yeah, a prize bin, which we take to various conventions and we give away stuff. Yeah. Uh, so this is also so uh, we've got one of those um, uh, little pops. Oh, that you that you put on the on and the it's clothes. a Batman one. Now, interesting. I was watching a, a video about ASMR, which is when people talk real 
Yeah. Yeah. I'm crushing ice in my mouth. <laughs> and the woman, disturbingly, looked like she was sucking one of these pops. So I don't know. Maybe that's a... A thing? a thing? I, I don't know. I don't know I don't if that's, know if that's a, thing. a thing or not. But, you uh, know, if we get desperate for money, maybe I could move into that. Um, <laughs> uh, now, I like you. I like notepads, so I'm going to claim this one. It's a, it's a Harley little notepad. Oh, Harley Quinn uh, journal pad. That's I like nice. that one. This is where I write nasty things about Take T. Take better Morris. selfies. Never drop your phone. I, oh, don't, I try not to drop my phone anyway. Uh, so I'm claiming the Harley. All right, claim the Harley. Uh, I don't know what that is. Courage the Cowardly Dog. Is that a Rick and Morty thing? Is my, um, I don't know. Is it? I don't know. Hold uh, on. And the, oh, oh, wait. No, Courage the Cowardly Dog. That's another uh, That's another Adult Swim. It's another Adult it's Swim. Another adult it's another Adult Swim. Oh, this is network. Mayhem. This is mayhem. mayhem. That makes sense. Hence mayhem. What, I mayhem. don't know. Why, why would Why would Batman be Mayhem? Uh, I think it's Batman and Harley. I think it might be the two of them. Together no, it's, this or is the Justice League pop sockets. They're not. They're not mayhem. Batman. I don't. I don't particularly. Okay. I don't particularly. What have we got here? You know what is T-shirt. it? T-shirt. I don't know what is that. Flip it around. Let me see. Um, that it. Mm, uh, yeah, not a clue what that is. Hold on a minute. Um, it's uh, taking suggestions from the cheap seats. Well, it'll say in there. Oh. It'll say in there. Oh, I think it's much better when people guess what <laughs> it is. Well, th- well th- throw me the... Uh, uh. Oh, this is Office Space? This is the movie Office Space? Oh, it's a, T- yeah, it's a TPS report. PC load letter means... It's, it's, it's the, it's, oh. Yeah, don't you remember? Oh, the icon- iconic printer smashing yeah, scene. Yeah, the iconic printer right. smashing scene. I actually nearly did that recently when our printer <laughs> said, load ink, and then it wouldn't... Freaking open for let me. We, we might actually throw this into the uh, into the prize bin. This okay. Might throw this in the prize. Bin. Okay. So we've got a couple of things. Are you going to keep the pop? Pop. Pop. No, pop, that's pop, also pop, going. So into the, but but the Rick and Morty thing we're keeping. I don't know where we're going to put it, but we're going to oh find a place gosh, for it. Oh gosh, we've I'm, got I'm, so much plastic I'm in starting this house. To eat this. <laughs> Thank you. I'm really worried. Uh, at least a journal has a like a purpose. I'm it just does. Saying. It does have a purpose. Oh, so, look at that! That will that will that will drive you crazy. Yeah, that's that that's a little, that's a little. Ooh, it probably that, looks terrible on video. That Twitch. looks terrible on video. It looks terrible on video. It looks terrible in real life. My eyeballs are. Um, it's, it's, it's <laughs> like one of those crazy PC load letter. What the f does that mean? I vaguely remember that. I've only seen Office Space once, so oh, it's okay. been it's been a long time since I've seen it. It's been a long time. So um. So we you did know, our loot crate. Woo! Yeah, that, there, so there's our that, that's our loot crate looky loop. Um, I don't think we're quite done yet. Hold on a minute. Writers off the clock. So what do you want to do? Uh, I don't know. What do you What do you want to do? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> 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 foul mouth woman. She is an absolute foul mouth. Who was woman. that woman? Yep. Anyway, um, so I, all right, so we um, we haven't been complete hermits, uh, which is good. We, uh, Thank goodness for we, that. We've actually been. Um, so so here's the thing, we've actually been mainlining David Suchet. Oh, and okay. Agatha Christie. You want to go Polo. there? Yeah, yeah. I want I want to talk a little bit about this. I want to talk about. Um, I want to talk about the the uh, the because this is how we're tying it back into writing. Let's get into the writing about the then. adaptations of of how 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 adaptations can can, can just can really, diverge yeah, can diverge yeah. So um and what brought this up was today we watched and we we thought we had watched it but it turns out we hadn't we had not because we were watching this going well I'd never seen this um so we watched today David Suchet's Agatha Christie's Praro. Yeah, and he was doing murder on and the Orient doing Express, on the Orient Express, which of course is the most famous. I mean, that's 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 the classic, right? That's the classic. And now we murder. watched it uh, recently with Serena because we watched the Kenneth Branagh version. Right. right. She really loved it, and she had never she didn't know what yeah, who had she, done it. She didn't. She didn't know. She didn't know. Because by this one. stage, you feel like everybody on the planet knows yeah. who did it. Yeah. But and they I actually didn't. give away the spoiler in Twitch for Dummies, so there you go. Whoopsie. But um, but no, I, I do. Uh, you're absolutely right. After Munch. seventy years, I think so, you're okay. And that was really what kind of kind of kicked it was kicked what it kicked it Munch. Was that we we had finished watching uh, Murder on the Orient Express, and I said, you know what, Pip, I feel like watching some David Suchet Poirot. Mm. So we 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 started with episode one, season one, and we've been just working all summer long. Oh, twenty years of the, his twenty years of performance. Poirot. Yeah, and um, he doesn't really change that much in looks, David Suchet. Oh, though. No, he no. Weirdly. David Suchet doesn't change, but the character does. Oh yes, when when he starts on on the BBC, 
he's he is slightly jovial. He is a little quirky, but then by by Murder on the Orient Express, he is a dark individual. Yes, but so so here's the thing. Well, so, like, hanging so, out with that much murder, you'd yeah, hope, I know. you know, it's, it's going to affect murder you. loves Poirot. <laughs> murder loves Poirot. Yeah, but he doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't amble like John Luther. You know? <laughs> he, anyway, he, 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 he tootles. So anyway, so tootles. So what we were doing was we um. We, we, were, we were talking about the three versions that we know of of mm-hmm. Murder on Orient Express. There was one with Albert Finney, mm-hmm. and that was the all-star cast. Um, there were a lot of incredible That was in the 70s. In, that was in the 70s. Um, Sean Connery was in, was, in the, um, was, in the, was in the cast. I remember that. Um, I want to say Dame Maggie Smith was in it, too. But it was it was really a who's who. Yeah. But it was Albert Finney who played uh, who played. I can't really see Poirot. him as Poirot. But um, you don't want him. I, I what was really the mustache did. like? I feel like the mustache okay. makes the, so make the, it the mus- character. The mustache was not as epic as Branagh's, yeah. but it was that style. Uh. I remember being that style. And he actually had a little mustache protector that he slept in. And, uh, you know, and it was just, it, it, was, it, was, it was quirky, mm-hmm. but it would, I just felt like Albert Finney was trying too hard. He was doing something with his voice that just sounded... It just sounded grating. If, if um, the only the only modern uh, impression that I can think of, the only modern uh, version of that voice was when John Leguizamo was playing Tybalt in the uh, rock and roll Romeo and Juliet with DiCaprio. And, and uh, if you remember, if you remember, Leguizamo's voice was like this. Yes, for the entire he movie. was the cat. He was cat. Yes, yes, he was. He was Tybalt, and the this, cat. Now picture this, but it was Praro. That was that was the Albert Finney imp- uh, no, and, and it was, it was no. I did Peter Ustinov never did a version of No, Peter Ustinov did a version of Death Did I ever Nile. tell you I met Peter Ustinov? Yes, you did. I yes, did. You did. He you was did. lovely. Yeah. So um so so there was that, but then you had Branagh's version. So so Branagh is the is, is the most recent one. I really enjoyed Branagh's mm-hmm. version. A lot of people did not care for it, but I really did enjoy Branagh's take. And it was successful enough that he's going to do Death on the Nile. So I'm anxious yeah. to see that. But what I want to talk about um, was the difference. What, what did you feel were the, were the nuances between uh, the, the adaptation of, uh, of the Branagh version and the adaptation that, that, uh, that Suchet did? Um, <clears throat> well, for a start off, uh, people have commented, I've seen online, people have commented on the latter half of the David Suchet Poirot's he starts to explore the religious aspect yeah. of Poirot, yeah. which is mentioned in the books, but it's not made a lot of. Right. Um, but definitely in, uh, you saw him with a rosary, you saw him praying, you saw him talking about God to right. people, um, which um, I didn't know, not sure if you knew this, but uh, David Suchet converted uh, to an Episcopalian, an Anglican. Episcopalians, uh, <clears throat> the win. Uh, right later on in his life. Right. Uh, so he started to become interested in, in, in religion and spirituality and stuff. Right. So I, I feel like that's probably fed into his portrayal of, of Poirot. Um, and Poirot is a Catholic, of course. He's, right. he's not Episcopalian. Yeah. Uh, they had this terrific scene that, that was not in Branagh's film mm-hmm. of, the, um, of the, the, the murder victim praying, and he was a despicable individual. And he was praying for God's protection. Yes. At the same time, Praro was doing his evening prayers. Yeah. And watching that going yeah. back and forth, that was. That they was they pretty, added a few little ingenious. extra bits, like the the bit where uh, one of the the murderers considers, "Hey, if we just kill Poirot yeah. and the guy who runs the train, yeah. we can get away with this." Yeah. And then uh, uh, the governess, I think it was, yeah. steps in and says, "Hey, if we do this, we're, we're no gonna better be, than the guy that we're we no, killed. We're no better than the guy that yeah. we that we yeah. killed, so we yeah. can't do that." And that was a nice little bit because it gave Poirot a reason to right. flip, right, and to go against his initial thoughts right. about you know just turning them all in. Um, and I. I I just, well, obviously Suchet has inhabited this character for twenty years. And this is where I think it's unfair to say that Branagh. When they when they say, "Well, Branagh's no Suchet," hey, wait, Branagh hasn't played Praro for two decades. Yeah, it's like saying it's like saying, "Well, you know, Robert Downey Jr. He's no Jeremy Brecht." It's like, of duh, course not. <laughs> of course not. He's the hot Sherlock Holmes. Come yes, on. Yes, but but Suchet really inhabits yeah. Poirot, yeah. and just the amazing the when he starts to. 
fight his own conscience about whether he should put throw these people in. Wow. His acting. Yeah. I mean, oh you just see every little oh emotion and you're like, oh, I just. It's like when Anthony Hopkins was in Westworld and they, they had that oh, they did scene that breakdown where, where it... you could see like 25 different emotions <laughs> in about a minute uh, on his face. And so, yeah, it's not fair uh, yeah, to I me. Think, I think with Branagh's, with Branagh's, uh, with, with Branagh's uh, Praro, I felt that it was more of the conflict of he is all you know uh, th they both share the same thing they both shared the same conflict of this is right this is wrong yes. this is right this is wrong it's black and white and they both got angry and they both got angry um but the the ending i thought was incredible so in the so in the, in in Branagh's one he is resigned he 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 is resigned. He is you know, ben Benedict Cumberbatch. Yes, again, he's the hot Sherlock, but he's no Jeremy Brecht. Uh, anyway, so um, but but when you have when you have um, Branagh, he is he is almost he's he's resigned. He's not broken. No, he is re he, he's just he is like well, I've learned something. And he tells them that I'm not gonna I'm not gonna yeah. dob you in. He just comes out and he says I'm not gonna I'm not gonna uh um you know reveal this yeah and he, and which is what. Finney does as well in his version. Yeah. So he basically just comes out and says it. But at the end, Branagh is Branagh's Poirot is um he he's contemplative. Mm -hmm. He's um he's a little melancholy. Yeah. Because he's suddenly realizing that the order that he so desperately seeks in the world isn't there. But Suchet plays it as as he is broken. Yeah. Um, well, he takes out his rosary. rosary yeah. And he starts fingering his and rosary, starts, and you're like, and, and he's and he's he's. On he's, the, he's on the verge of tears. Yeah, he's on the verge as he's walking away, and that was the other nice thing too. In Suchet's Poirot, um, he never tells them. No, I'm he gets gonna... off the train, and they're like, "What are you going to do? Yeah, are we are we going to go to prison?" Him. Or well, they're watching him with uh, they're they're watching him uh, you know play around with the, and they suddenly realize they're going with a cover story that somebody was on the train masquerading as one of the crew, and then they get away. Yeah, and I'm sorry if you're saying spoilers, T. I'm sorry. It's been seventy it's years. Been seventy Come years. Out. Get over it. Um, by the way, the boat sinks, and it turns out she's had the diamond all the time. Anyway, so um, <laughs> so so going back, he to, is Kaiser Soze. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> but Suchet's Poirot, he's walking away, uh, you know, and he's doing the rosary, and he's he is near tears. He, he is near tears, and it's it's almost like he is broken because he is still struggling. He wants to believe in a black and white in world, a black and white world in in justice, but then in this situation. Um, sorry, Munch. I, I think I just ruined Titanic for Munch. Um, but um, don't worry, his hat will go on. Yeah, exactly. Um, but uh, but when he's walking away, he is just he he appears shattered because I think he he's he's coming to grips with the fact he's not resigned like Branagh's. Yeah, it's more like he is he is like I I can't buy into this. There's got to be justice. But then he realizes these people didn't get justice. So they had to get it on their yeah, own. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I was saying this when we were watching Murder on the Orient Express. It almost feels like that that story was Agatha Christie's um, comeuppance for Praro. It's like, okay. She did not like Praro. She did not care for Praro. Not towards the end, anyway. Because no. uh, we if we're talking about writing, uh, she was trapped in a golden cage with Praro. People loved Praro. And unlike <clears throat> when Sherlock Holmes was like, everybody wanted Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, Arthur Conan Doyle killed him off because he was like, I'm done with this guy. I'm <laughs> killing him. I'm throwing him off. I'm going to throw him off a waterfall and done with him. And then everyone was like, no. And he got so much outrage that he had to bring him back, which was yeah. difficult, but he yeah. did. But he did. But Agatha Christie, ne it, but Agatha okay. Christie never did that. She was no. like, okay, my job as a writer is to give the readers what they want. What they want. And they want Poirot. Right. But she said it, and he annoyed her. Right. She much preferred I, Miss Marple. Who annoys me. But, um, but she wrote less Miss Marple. But I, I really feel like that the Murder on the Orient Express was her way of, of sticking it to Poirot. <laughs> yeah. Because oh, you was, think you're like black oh, and white? Oh, well, well, how about a situation you. where it's gray? Yeah. And, um, and it, it, yeah. So do yourself a favor. Uh, do yourself a favor. Go out and not only find, um, not only find the Branagh Poirot, but watch... Branagh's Murder on the Orient Express, and then watch uh, the Agatha Christie Poirot with uh, with David Suchet. Mm -hmm. It's an if, interesting if comparison. You're, if you're really feeling brave, watch the Albert Finney one too. But I I would not recommend that on my best friend. Um, and just see what how much 
you know, a director and a really good screenwriter can get out of adaptation. It's it's really amazing to watch. So, when we first started to go, when we when we first uh, were getting ready to go live, Pip said, "Well, let's keep it quick. Let's only do like thirty uh, I should have known better. I, I I knew better. I was like, "This is going to be a long show. <laughs> this is going to be a long show because." But now we're going to. She's going to enjoy it. She's going to enjoy the live <sighs> aspect of it. She's going to enjoy the video of it. And uh, yeah, you see that? You see that face? That was the face that uh, broke my heart. There you go. That's what. That's what brings me here. That's what brings <laughs> me here, everybody. Uh, so. Um, so we're gonna wrap up what we're gonna be doing. Yeah, we're gonna wrap up what we're doing. So. Um, You've got the calendar there, baby. I do. No, I don't. You have a calendar on your computer. Oh, I do have a calendar. In which I add things. Yeah. Oh. Oh, really? So we haven't got anything in September, but no, I know. No, we don't. But we've got we've got a couple of things in November. We actually do. Yeah. We, we actually and have a really uh, one in November and one and quite a few in October. Um. As far I, I, as writing goes, we're going to be at the Hello Read in yep. Ellicott City, Maryland. What day would that be? That's the day before my 50th birthday. That is right. Now, <laughs> Ellicott City, you may know, um, has suffered massive wow. flooding back when we were at Balticon. Um, the beautiful little uh, restaurant, Tea on the Tiber, where we've done signings before, mm-hmm. is gone. It's gone. Um, it's and gone. the poor lady who ran it, she rebuilt it after a previous flood. And this one came again. through in May, destroyed it, and she's just, I can understand completely, she's yeah. done. Yeah. Um, so what we're going to be doing, we're going to be at the museum, and right. we're going to be doing right. uh, tea and readings and probably giveaways. And definitely giveaways. Uh, definitely then. giveaways. We're also going Feel to... Feel free to come in costume as well. Oh, and yes, please a, do. So that's on the 27th of October, mm-hmm. and uh, it's uh, it's uh, Hello Read. You can buy tickets for that. Yep. Look up Hello Read. Uh, it's H-A-L-L-O-W. R E A D, and I will make sure to have a link in the show notes yeah, for that. We will put a link in there. Um, the week before, on the twentieth, oh. we are going to be at my old stomping ground, the Maryland. I feel Renaissance like it's our Festival. stomping ground now because I've been there a few times. You have been yeah. there a few times, not as many times as you. Not as many times as uh, me. And uh, and also, you don't have the history that I have at the no, Maryland Renaissance Festival. That could be a good thing. That could be a very <laughs> very good thing. But we have a lovely Always time signing. Kids. We have a sorry, we have a that? lovely time signing at page we after do. page. Page after page, and uh, we will be there. We will have uh, multiple of, books, multiple new stuff. The the most new book, uh, the most new, the mostly new book, the mostly new book, uh, the new, this the is newest, why we have editors, the everybody. newest, the the latest book that we brought with us to uh, to to the event last year, I believe, was Curse of the Silver Pharaoh. Yeah, and, uh, and uh, Emerald Flame will be there, uh, as well as the dossier. The dossier will be there. And now you're saying the Sea Kings. It could be. It could, could bring be. one of everything. We'll, we'll, we'll see what's going on there. I mean, how big a table have they got? Uh, they got like yeah, a, exactly. a 10 foot long table. There we go. Um, and then in November, uh, November 16th through the 18th, uh, is a is a lovely little event called PhilCon. I'm hoping to kill two birds one stone and hook up with Aura, who is a uh, who is in in that area, and I'm looking forward to uh, touching base with him. At least I hope. I well, you mean you we we want to have dinner with him? Well, we want to have dinner with him. Yeah, that's that's what I was talking about. What were you thinking? Damn, a hook girl. up has a different connotation Damn, where I come Tackle from. Tackle on grapple. You're just all over the place, aren't you? Um, just clarifying. Uh, okay, well, you know. Uh, Yes, yes, I know, I know, I know. It, it's because it's been since, what, 1962 since we had played together on the video games? I hear you, I hear you. And I'm looking forward to my birthday. I've got I've got a lot of plans. At least I have chicken. Well, actually, no, what I'm going to do is uh, uh, Pip and I are going to uh, spiff up our uh, passports. We're going to Germany, yo. I just spiffed up my passport. Yeah, we're going to Germany for uh for Beer? birthday. Beer? We're going to go there for beer. We're going to go there for a beer spa. We're actually going to be with um, the lovely Verena Vorzatz, our uh, our cover model. She has been uh, itching for us to come out for a visit. And since my 40th birthday was totally borked, I said, you know what? For my 50th birthday. Let's kick it up a notch. Look, look, uh, look I think I mentioned the war, but I got away with it. Um, no, I don't say that. Um, so, yeah. Uh, guten Tag, mein Herr. So, Gangster. Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm literally looking forward so to. So, once, once, we, once we're done with October... Uh, uh, we go to November. We do oh, PhilCon. You know what else we're doing? What, are, what else are we doing, darling? It's our wedding anniversary. Oh, that's right. And guess what? The restaurant we're going to just got its third Michelin star. So This um, is so out of alley. It's so posh. It is so, so posh. posh. I'm not going to be ready it's for it. It's the Inn at Little Washington, and it's the only three Michelin star restaurant in the area in be, Washington, D.C. I'm going to be honest with you, Chad. I am planning to wear Destiny socks when I go to this. Just hope they don't check us at the door for that sort of stuff. Don't check my socks. Looking for geek stuff. Exactly. (laughs) 
<laughs> well, we're going to post pictures of that. We're going to Instagram every picture. Oh, we're going to Instagram every, the shit everything. out of that. Everything. Um, so anyway, so thank you everybody for uh, for joining us on this uh, this very uh, this very first live show. Uh, this has been absolute uh, mayhem. Mayhem. <laughs> it's been it's been ridiculous fun, and uh, and I, I just I I honestly cannot thank you all enough for for joining us on this little uh, this little adventure that we've that we've been doing tonight. So we're just going to go on ahead. And we're gonna um, dance we're gonna, our way out. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna dance our way out. There's not gonna we're just gonna let auto host do its own thing, um, and we're just gonna uh, we're just gonna uh, re- just enjoy this. We're gonna just enjoy uh, the um, uh, the splendor and the majesty of of being live on Twitch. It's been an absolute ball. Yes, we will do this again. I prompt. Do, do you want to do it again? All right. <laughs> So just remember, folks, your shared desk is protected by a non-commercial no derivative. We share like a nice entry for no license. You can find out more about the license at creativecommons.org. Thanks, everybody, for listening. We will, uh, uh, we, we will see you another time, and hopefully in two weeks. Until then, enjoy the ride. Catch you later.